Hello everyone. Welcome to lecture week 11. So in this uh, week, we're going to talk about a new topic, which is integral calculus. Uh, we're going to look at uh, what it means to do integration, and in particular, what is area under the curve or area under the line. And then from there on, we're going to talk about uh, antiderivatives and uh, uh, indefinite integral, right? And also along with definite integral in the future uh, weeks. Uh, and lastly, we're going to talk about the properties of taking the indefinite integration. So let's get started. All right. So what does it mean to take the uh, antiderivative? Well, uh, if you look at uh, the the definition, so basically it means that we're going to reconstruct a function from its derivative, right? So uh, earlier we mentioned that if we take the derivative of, for example, uh, a function, so this is a raw function. If we take a derivative, then we have a new function. So this is the raw function, right? It's the derivative function, derivative function. So uh, uh, in other words, this is totally derived. And uh, okay, so let me express uh, f of x as a raw function, not the f prime of x. So this is a raw function, raw function. And uh, by taking the derivative or performing the uh, differentiation the operation, then we have the derivative function. And now we're going uh, backwards. We want to say, uh, based on the derivative function, how, re how can we reconstruct the raw function, right? So basically it's the opposite of differentiation. And uh, we see that uh, uh, this function itself, it is an antiderivative of the derivative function if this happens, right? So if we just uh, satisfy the con condition that uh, uh, we take the derivative and uh, the derivative happens to be equal to this, the lowercase uh, uh, f of x, right? And uh, uh, so what does mean the, this mean to us? For example, let's just take uh, one example. So we have x uh, cubed over three, right? This is uh, for example, our f of x. And then what is the derivative? Derivative is nothing more than we take the differentiation. So you can write it uh, in this way. And then uh, naturally you have x squared, right? So this is uh, what we know how to do. Um, and uh, suppose that I have another function, right? So I have another function, fx equals to the same function. That's plus two, right? Now what uh, f prime of x becomes, it becomes the same thing, x squared, right? So. Um, and if we plug in any additional number, so this additional number does not uh, change my results in terms of the uh, derivative. However, the raw function, uh, they are different. So in other words, there are infinitely many raw functions and I can just uh, express the raw function in a general way, which is that uh, x cubed over three plus c. Now uh, this c is a constant. It's a constant, it can be any real number, right? So any uh, real number, right? So that's what we have uh, now taking, so, uh, so basically what I have is that taking the differentiation when we go from the left to right, from the row function to the derivative function, we have one definite uh, solution. But when we go back from the derivative for, to the row function, there are infinitely uh, many mappings, right? Infinitely many row functions that correspond to the same uh, derivative function, right? So, um, so uh, antiderivatives. If if we see that uh, uh, this uh, their their derivatives are the same, right? If I have two functions f and g, and their derivatives are the same, then we have this relationship. So basically, uh, all the functions are just uh, uh, difference by a constant, right? For some constant k. Uh, uh, okay, so let's uh, look at one example. Uh, so in this example, we have the uh, the uh, row function. So this is our row function, and we want to take the derivative, which is uh, gives us x, right? And now the first question asks for the uh, the anti derivatives. So naturally, we just plug in the row function, and we see that's f of x. 
just to the row function and uh, plus a constant uh, k. So let me use the k as the constant. So this is the expression for the uh, all the antiderivatives, right? So this is a class of functions. So the second question asks us to graph it. Now we know how to graph this one. And uh, what does this mean, right? This part means that k can be any value, right? k can be any value. So we're looking for the value of k such that it passes through uh, this point, this point, and this point. So that means that uh, by looking at the graph, uh, so this point, this point, this point, so we have different functions that passes through. So what are the uh, functions that passes through? So naturally we can have uh, this, this, and this, right? So three functions that passes through. So three uh, versions of f of x. Uh, so how did this graph uh, of the 3D antiderivatives relate? So basically, we can graphically tell that these are just uh, uh, vertical shifts of of one another, all right? So we can shift up and down to get uh, the other function. All right. Uh, so let's uh, look at integration uh, and area on the curve. So uh, integration. What is uh, used? So it can be used to find the area onto the curve of a function. So graphically, uh, let's look at uh, x and now uh, f of x, right? So if uh, f of x, the graph is something like this, right? Something like this. And then uh, what this means is that if I take the integration of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, f of x with respect to x, now, this is a long sentence. How do we express it? If we take the integration, what to integrate? So this, uh, uh, this uh, in the, uh, integration sign, right? Integration uh, symbol. So we want to in integrate f of x with respect to dx, right? So okay, so with respect to x, and the way the way we express it is using dx. D is for differential. Right? Then uh, what this means is that uh, we actually uh, so this dx corresponds to a slice uh, a slice uh, in the on the graph right so the slice means that this is gonna be uh, infinitely small right so just one units uh, distance uh, so that's what it means basically we take multiple slices uh, infinitely many slices and then uh, uh, multiply by the row function uh, by the uh, due to function f of x and then integrate so sum it up so it gets the area under the curve. So the uh, so this is uh, so x is now uh, continuous, right? So it may not be helpful to understand directly, but if we look at uh, uh, discrete case, so we have uh, for example here again we have f of x and uh, x, right? So discrete case means uh, just uh, three bars, right? So x can be uh, in this range, uh, for example, uh, and and uh, this is our uh, dx, dx, dx the width, and then this is our height. So f of is our height. Now I want to calculate the total area, right? Well, what is the total area? So I will say uh, first bar gives me the uh, 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 f. Okay, so f x uh, multiplied by dx. So maybe just uh, express it as fx1 to differentiate, right? Uh, so this is one, two, three. It's fx1, fx2, and fx3, all right? So uh, this is the, 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 the area of the first bar and plus the area of the second bar. So this is uh, width times the height and then uh, width times the height, all right? Now, uh, so th there's another way to express it. So this is equivalent can be equivalent. It can be expressed as sum uh, f x dx, right? And then x can be one, two, three, right? Uh, so maybe let us uh, express as uh, i. So the index can be one, two, three, and we have this index here. So uh, this uh, summation, this is summation sign. So basically, which means that uh, it's gonna sum across all the different values of i. So this summation in the, so this is discrete, right? Discrete case. Uh, we we'll wanna look at continuous case. Continuous case. Then uh, this is what we use, right? So this is 
in integral sign. So I think the integration, but so we still do the same thing to so the height multiplied by the width. The only difference is that the width now is very, very small, right? Infinitely small. We're going to make a differential. Uh, but the interpretation is the, still the same, right? We're, we're adding up uh, multiple infinite and mining uh, bars, so we get the area under the curve. So that's why we have the area under the curve. So, uh, so basically, uh, the error can be obtained by adding slices, so slices that approach zero in width, right? So that's uh, that's what we mean. Okay. Now, uh, there are two types of uh, integrals we you talk about. One is the definite integral, that means that we are going to define an interval, right? So from A to B. So it means that X will be uh, bigger than or equal to A, less than or equal to B. Right, and then uh, we are taking the area of uh, of this uh, the indefinite integral. Usually means that uh, uh, this by default goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. But of course, uh, the function, if we look at uh, uh, other other values, if we go from to the left and to the right, the function value is going to be zero. Right. So uh, again, uh, that means that so we only start from here and, and from here. So it depends on the uh, the the domain uh, where the function has a value, right? So, so that's uh, that's if we do not specify a value, then that's by default what we mean uh, in terms of indefinite integral. So let's uh, talk more about indefinite integral, and uh, specifically we use uh, this, right? The, the integral of f of f of x with regard to x, right? To um, express the family of all antiderivatives of uh, f of x, right? So this is the antiderivative, right? So this we call the antiderivative. And uh, and if we express it, then it will be x of x plus uh, a constant c, right? So basically this is the, you can interpret it as this row function, this derivative function, and then we take the antiderivative we get back the row function. Um, and we have a few properties. First one is that if we take the derivative of the uh, antiderivative, right? So we have antiderivative here. Then what is this? So first, fs uh, is going to be, uh, it's, we're going to take the antiderivative, right? In the integral. And then we take another uh, derivative, so which gives us uh, itself, right? Uh, it's just a travel to the row function, then back to the derivative function. So uh, we all can also look at the uh, f of x, uh, the row function derivative, right? So the derivative is gonna be self, right? So this basically is uh, f of x, right? So just express in different uh, ways. So we take the uh, derivative and then take the integral, then we get the row function, and of course it's a class of antiderivatives, then we head to it. At the constant c, so um, so let's uh, uh, define some uh, names for uh, the terms of cat. So this is called the integrand, integrand, right? And then uh, this uh, we in the previous slides we talked about it is a slice, right? Slice along the x-axis, right? Along the x-axis. So this is a very small. Uh, differential. And what's this? This is the integral symbol, right? Integral symbol. So it's a symbol the, that represents the inter integration, right? integration operation. So the whole term, right? This term is called the indefinite integral. So this is the indefinite integral, right? And uh, this is uh, go to this, this value. So <laughs> So uh, we actually, we, so how do we read this? So we, we read this as uh, we are taking the, uh, the integral of f of x, right? With respect to x, right? So this uh, is very important. So we are taking the integral with respect to x. Sometimes there are multiple variables. So we need to specify which uh, variable, right? We are taking uh, anti-derivative or anti-differentiation with, re with respect to, right? Okay. So let's look at uh, uh, the some of the basic functions when we take the indefinite integrals. So we know that um, uh, earlier we looked at the function, power function. And if you want to take the uh, derivative of this power function, it naturally gives us 
n uh, multiply n x plus minus y. So n is any uh, constant, right? That is the rule of uh, the power function when take the derivative. And now say if I want to take the take the antiderivative. So what do we have? So antiderivative. Uh, what do we have? So basically, uh, this is the derivative function. I want to take, I want to say what is the raw function that gives me this uh, derivative. So raw function. Then uh, by construct, I know that this is gonna be x plus n over uh, n plus n plus one. So x to the power of n plus one. Right, so this is because if I plug in, if I just uh, uh, plug in this, right? so I know that uh, uh, this is what I have. So if I have, uh, let me just re-express it. So how do I know this is the value? Because if I do the opposites, if I do the opposites, uh, let me just leave some space. So if I do the opposites, then I have x uh, to the power of n, right? So then the, let's see if this happens. If this is then I take the inverse, I take the integral of uh, the derivative function, then I get the raw function. But uh, there's uh, uh, this constant here because it's, if it pluses as any constant, then it does has no impact on the results, right? So we need to add a constant c here to represent that it's actually a class of raw functions that corresponds to this this derivative, all right? So that's what they have here. Um, and then also have the uh, uh, the uh, the exponential function. So exponential function, it's just itself, right? However, when we take the antiderivative, uh, what we have it is against itself, but uh, plus a constant c, right? Uh, and uh, what if uh, uh, we have the uh, the different base. So let me express it this way. We have a different base, b to the power of x, this exposure function. And uh, based on the earlier uh, uh, lectures uh, contents, then we know that it's gonna be law in b. We have this actual constant here, and then multiply b to the power of x, right? So we have a condition that b should be positive. Now the question is uh, what becomes uh, uh, the integral, right? So the integral of b of a to the power of x dx. Now this becomes, uh, of course, we can we need to cancel out the the uh, constant, so we self it itself. But we have this extra law in b here, right? So and we are uh, expressing as a class of functions. So that's what we have. Uh, continue. Uh, we have uh, uh, law in x, right? So law in x is something we look at. The derivative of this function with respect to x, then we have one over x. So here, x of course needs to be positive, right? Uh, that's our implicit co uh, condition on x. Now, what if uh, we take the antiderivative of this function? Right? What well, it uh, becomes? So this will become ln, but it's a uh, absolute value modulus of x, and then plus a constant c, right? Um, so, so, so we need to ensure that this portion is actually a uh, positive, uh, right? It needs to be positive. Um, okay, so continue. Uh, we have uh, so let me just for the cos and the sine function, let me just write it out directly. So it's gonna be negative cos x plus c. Why? Because this derivative itself will give me an additional negative sign, right? Which will cancel out. So I have additional negative sign here. And correspondingly for cosine x, the antiderivative is going to be sine x plus c, right? So sine x plus c. Okay, so that's uh, these are the common uh, uh, antiderivatives of the, uh, the basic functions, and uh, uh, this will actually again uh, be uh, commonly encountered when we uh, take the antiderivatives for indefinite integrals. Um, okay, so I think that's uh, pretty much about it. Um, before we uh, Move on. Then. Let me just take one more slide, which is uh, the uh, some properties. So first property is if k is a constant, then as usual we can move the constants outside right? and just focus on the 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 uh, integral uh, of the uh, function uh, inside. And also if it's a uh, summation, right? So it's a subtraction, then we can just separate these two terms. So basically distribute this integral operation to each term inside the uh, the uh, brackets, and then we have uh, two terms here. So 
So let's just uh, look at one example. So here we have uh, integral of two and then dx, then we can move to outside. Then what's inside? Inside is actually we multiply by one, right? So multiply by one. And what's the function that gives us a derivative of one? It's gonna be x, right? So it's gonna be equal to uh, two times x. Uh, but we need to add a constant c. So this portion will give us uh, the derivative of one, but uh, we need to add this, this extra constant here, c. So we should be, become two x plus two c, right? But this, uh, because it sees just any constant, then in the final answer, we can just write to x plus c because uh, constant itself, uh, uh, this is a more general representation, right, of any constants in the results. All right, so that's it for this video and uh, thanks for watching.